Amen. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Christ has risen from the dead. Alleluia. God the Father has crowned him with glory and honor. He has given him dominion over the works of his hands. He has put all things under his feet. Alleluia, alleluia. Let us come before God in true repentance, seeking his mercy and forgiveness. O oh God, our Father, we admit and confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean, and that we have sinned against you in thought and in word and in deed. We confess that we have not lived as your followers, but have sought to go our own ways and directions that have not brought glory to you or blessing to others. We confess that your love has not reached others through us in every situation, that there have been times in which we have been loveless, thoughtless, and judgmental toward others, unwilling to help our neighbors as we ought. We confess that your will has not been our priority at all times, and that we have not always been defenders of the weak and helpless in our circle of family, neighbors, and friends. We confess that we have not used every opportunity given to us to witness to the resurrection faith that is ours, and have at times been slow to speak of the hope that is ours in Christ. Let it be done for you as you believe. In the stead and by the command of our Lord Jesus Christ, I, a called and ordained servant of Christ, forgive you all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely, and may your whole spirit, soul, and body be kept blameless in the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. He who calls you is faithful. He will surely do it. Go in peace. Amen. For the peace won for all people by Christ our Lord through his death and resurrection, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For peace from on high brought near by the blood of Christ, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For peace on earth and among God's people, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For peace in this house of prayer and in the hearts of all who suffer, who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious, risen Lord Jesus. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, by the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, you destroyed death and brought life and immortality to light. Grant that we who have been raised with him may abide in his presence and rejoice in the hope of eternal glory. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The first reading for this Easter Sunday is from the book of Acts, chapter 10. Then Peter began to speak. I now realize how true it is that God does not show favoritism, but accepts men from every nation who fear him and do what is right. You know the message God sent to the people of Israel, telling the good news of peace through Christ Jesus, who is Lord of all. You know what has happened throughout Judea beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John preached, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power, and how he went around doing good and healing all who were under the power of the devil because God was with him. We are witnesses of everything he did in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They killed him by hanging him on a tree, but God raised him from the dead on the third day and caused him to be seen. He was not seen by all the people, but by witnesses whom God had already chosen, by us who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one whom God appointed as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him, that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Christ Jesus abolished death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. Alleluia. 
The Old Testament reading is from Jeremiah chapter 31. At that time, declares the Lord, I will be the God of all the clans of Israel, and they will be my people. This is what the Lord says. The people who survive the sword will find favor in the desert. I will come to give rest to Israel. The Lord appeared to us in the past, saying, I have loved you with an everlasting love. I have drawn you with loving kindness. I will build you up again, and you will be rebuilt, O virgin Israel. Again, you will take up your tambourines and go out to dance with the joyful. Again, you will plant vineyards on the hills of Samaria. The farmers will plant them and enjoy their fruit. There will be a day when watchmen cry out on the hills of Ephraim, Come, let us go up to Zion, to the Lord our God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm of this Easter festival is Psalm 16. Preserve me, O God, for in you I take refuge. I say to the Lord, You are my Lord. I have no good apart from you. As for the saints in the land, they are the excellent ones, in whom is all my delight. The sorrows of those who run after another God shall multiply. Their drink offerings of blood I will not pour out or take their names on my lips. The Lord is my chosen portion and my cup. You hold my lot. The lions have fallen for me in pleasant places. Indeed, I have a beautiful inheritance. I bless the Lord who gives me counsel. In the night also my heart instructs me. I have set the Lord always before me. Because he is at my right hand, I shall not be shaken. Therefore my heart is glad, and my whole being rejoices. My flesh also dwells secure. For you will not abandon my soul to Sheol, or let your Holy One see corruption. You make known to me the path of life. In your presence there is fullness of joy. At your right hand are pleasures forevermore. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Epistle lesson is from the book of Colossians, chapter 3. Since then you have been raised with Christ. Set your hearts on things above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things above, not on earthly things. For you died, and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you will also appear with him in glory. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In today's gospel, we hear the command of the angel to the women as they visited the empty tomb. Go quickly and tell. The powerful message of the resurrection is of first importance. The women responded, leaving the garden tomb with fear and great joy. They ran to tell the disciples. Today we share the experience of those first witnesses of the resurrection. And by God's grace, we meet our Lord here in his word. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 28th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. After the Sabbath, at dawn on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. There was a violent earthquake, for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven, and going to the tomb, rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothes were white as snow. The guards were so afraid of him that they shook and became like dead men. The angel said to the women, Do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here. He has risen, just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, He has risen from the dead and is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him. Now I have told you. So the women hurried away from the tomb, afraid yet filled with joy and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them there. Greetings, he said. They came to him, clasped his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to him, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There you will see me. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. 
We now sing the sermon hymn number 480, He's Risen, He's Risen. Friday. 
Imagine that it was the same, perhaps even worse, for Simon Peter and all the other disciples, but especially for Peter. He had been with Jesus from the beginning, from those first days by the Sea of Galilee. He loved Jesus with all his heart. He had such hopes, such expectations for the future, all of which seemed to be coming true the day they entered Jerusalem to the shouts and praises of the people on Palm Sunday. What a day that was. And how quickly things changed. They went from Palm Sunday, from the mountaintop, to Good Friday, the deepest valley. And not only did Peter and the others have to deal with the loss and the grief, they all had betrayed him. They all deserted him. Peter even denied knowing him three times. He would never, at least he thought, get the chance to ask for forgiveness, make things right again. The sun had risen on that first Easter morning, but Peter and the others were still in the deep darkness of Good Friday. Today is Easter Sunday, 2,000 years later. And I cannot help but feel that for many people, perhaps most of you right now, it's still Good Friday. We live in a Good Friday world. As if things weren't bad enough before, with children killing their classmates, parents abusing their children, terrorists bombing and killing innocent people. Now we are all huddled away in our upper rooms like the disciples, trying to avoid catching a potentially deadly virus. It's a Good Friday world. Bad news comes in buckets. Even in the midst of this pandemic, the pain in the world shows no sign of stopping. A friend is diagnosed with cancer. Another is divorcing. And yet another grieves over the loss of a loved one and the inability to even say farewell at a funeral due to social distancing. It's a good Friday world. Hopelessness is the theme of the day. People are forcibly quarantined at home. Jobs are being lost left and right. Students are relegated to online studies, which may get the job done, but in isolation, without the peer contact and interaction with their teacher. The elderly who already battle loneliness are cut off from, the mo from most contact from friends and loved ones. And there doesn't really seem to be any end in sight. Well, we don't have to look too far to see Good Friday in our lives. Like Mary, we find ourselves grieving over profound loss, or like the other women with Mary at the tomb, afraid, trembling, or like Peter, guilty, hurting because of a broken relationship. It's another Easter Sunday in the Good Friday world. But let me point out something to you, my Good Friday friends. I believe that we cannot even begin to understand or experience Easter unless we've been through Good Friday. Unless we've been where Mary was, our heart broken, our eyes blurred with tears, our spirits crushed by grief. You cannot get to Easter Sunday without going through Good Friday. Her name was Teresa. She was the daughter of a well-known professor at Christian College. Everyone thought she was a, a wonderful person, a, a gifted artist. She had just gotten married. Her, her whole life was ahead of her. But she grew very ill, and not soon after, died. For that professor and his family, it was Good Friday for a long time. But his remarks to a friend after her funeral are profound. He said, unless you stare death eye to eye, Easter is just a word. A nice day with bunny rabbits and eggs. But when someone so precious to you dies, Easter becomes everything. An anchor in a fierce storm, a rock on which to stand, a hope that raises you above despair and keeps you going. To the middle of our Good Friday world, Easter punches through with its brilliant light. Mary Magdalene and the other Mary walked sorrowfully to the place where they had last seen their Lord, a tomb in a garden not far from the shadow of the cross upon which he had given his life. 
They were going there to anoint his lifeless body with spices and wrap it properly as they were dumped in time on Friday. They probably were tears that made seeing the path in the early morning light somewhat difficult. But they were determined to provide this one last act of love for their Lord. They arrive at the tomb and look in to find not the Lord's body, but an angel, blazing in light and with clothes as white as snow. They must have shook in fear and worry. But the angel announces, don't be afraid. Jesus is not here. He's risen, just as he said. And the angel invites them to see that indeed the body is gone. The angel continues that he promises them that they are to go to Galilee. And wonder of wonders, there they will see Jesus. The women start to race away from the tomb at breakneck speed, afraid yet filled with joy. But before they can make it back to Jerusalem, there is the Lord. They fall to his feet and they worship him. The pain and sadness of Good Friday is stripped away in the hope and joy of Easter. All that he had promised is fulfilled. It was not over, but just beginning. There was joy, there was celebration, there was hope. My friends, Easter shines the same bright beam of rejoicing into our lives today. We live in a Good Friday world where we are tormented by our past, struggling with our present, and fearing our future. But our resurrected Lord tells us not to fear, but to take heart and rejoice. For he is Lord of it all. He's victorious. He's triumphant. And as we trust in him by faith, that same victory is ours. For the resurrection means no longer have we to fear our past, do you worry that people will find out what you're really like? Do you fear that they will discover what you did or said in the past? Do you fear that some of your past decisions will come back to haunt you? Do you fear that some of your past deeds will disqualify you from heaven? So, you join a large company of people, and Easter has good news for you. When Jesus came back from the dead, he proved that the sacrifice of his life was acceptable to God. His resurrection shows that the debt for sin has been paid. God's wrath has been satisfied. We are assured that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. And as Isaiah reminds us, though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. Sure, our past may embarrass us, but our past is dealt with. It's erased in the blood of Christ. As we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and forgives us all our sins and cleanses us of all our iniquities. We are forgiven and we know it's true because of the resurrection. What news of joy. We can also face our present with new confidence. The road we travel is often bumpy. We know we lack the power to walk faithfully and Often we think that the task seems overwhelming. We're not going to make it. There seems to be so much darkness, so much uncertainty, so much fear that we do not face tomorrow on a company. We do not walk in our own strength alone. If we trust in the one who has risen from the grave, we can be assured that Jesus walks with us through every step of our life. The Lord promises that nothing will separate us from his love. He also promises that in all things, he is at work in our lives for the good. These are promises that can calm the most anxious heart. When we face the fearful times of the present, and we look at the Lord, we realize that he has promised to give us the strength and resources to get through whatever comes. The resurrection is proof that he keeps his promises, and all that he says is true. We can bank on it. Finally, there is no fear for our future. The greatest threat we face in life is the threat of death, especially in this time of pandemic. The fear of death controls our life much more than we realize, although in this present time we become so much more aware of its impact on our day-to-day -day decisions. This fear can dictate what we eat, what activities we engage in, where we live, how many times we wash our hands, how close we are to the person in front of us, 
and on and on. The fear of death makes us fearfully attentive to every ache and pain in our body, every cough, every little thing that seems different from normal. The resurrection of Jesus takes the teeth out of death. Good Friday must give way to Easter. For Easter shows us that there is life beyond the grave. Death is no longer a giant. It's a mere blip on the screen of eternity. Jesus' return from the grave allows us to face death with new confidence. We understand now that for the child of God, death is a transition point and nothing more. There are good Fridays. There always will be. Easter doesn't mean that we won't be hurt, that life will be easy, that bad things won't happen. Because we have Easter, because we have a Savior, we can live our lives not in quiet desperation and anguish, but with the confidence that our living Lord holds our past, present, and future in his hands. And that brings hope and joy to our hearts. Good Friday, with its death and sorrow, gives way to the new life of Easter. One of my favorite stories is about a boy named Jeremy. Jeremy was born with a twisted body, a slow mind, and a chronic terminal illness that had been slowly killing him all his young life. Still, his parents had tried to give him as normal a life as possible and had sent him to a Christian elementary school. At age 12, Jeremy was only in second grade, seeming unable to learn. His teacher, Miss Miller, often became exasperated with him. He would squirm in his seat and drool and make grunting noises. She tried hard to ignore Jeremy's noises and his blank stares. The spring had come, and the children talked excitedly about the coming of Easter. And Miss Miller told them the story of Jesus. And then to emphasize the idea of new life springing forth, she gave each of the children a large plastic egg. Now she said, I want you to take this home and bring it back tomorrow with something inside that shows new life. The next morning, 19 children came to school laughing and talking as they placed their eggs in a large wicker basket on Miss Miller's desk. After they completed their math lesson, it was time to open the eggs. In the first egg, the student had placed a flower. Oh yes, a flower is certainly a sign of new life, she said. The next egg contained a plastic butterfly which looked very real. Miss Miller held it up. We all know that a caterpillar changes and grows into a beautiful butterfly. Yes, this is new life too. Then Miss Miller opened the third egg. She gasped. The egg was empty. Surely it had to be Jeremy's. Of course, he hadn't understood the instructions. When she didn't want to embarrass him, so she quietly set the egg aside and reached for another. And suddenly Jeremy spoke up. Miss Miller, aren't you going to talk about my egg? Flustered, Miss Miller said, but Jeremy, your egg is empty. And he looked into her eyes and said softly, yes, but Jesus' tomb was empty too. Time stopped, and when she could speak again, Miss Miller asked him, do you know why the tomb was empty? Oh, yes, Jeremy exclaimed. Jesus was killed and put in there, and then his father raised him up to new life. The recess bell rang, and all the children excitedly ran out to play, and Miss Miller cried. Jeremy understood a lot about new life. Three months later, Jeremy died. Jeremy's classmates attended the funeral, and after the pastor spoke, the children began to come up and place something in a basket on his casket. When Jeremy was buried, there were 19 empty Easter eggs buried with him, a sign of new life. Jeremy all the people we love, yes, even ourselves, must one day die. We've lived through hardships and troubles. We've known Good Friday. But the single greatest tale we can tell is the message the angel told Mary, which she later told the disciples, who later told thousands, who have passed it on from generation to generation, and which we now hear again today. He is not here. He is risen, just as he said. And that message is the hope and joy for our world and for us today and every day. Awake my heart with gladness. See what today has done. Now after gloom and sadness comes forth the glorious sun. 
my Savior there was laid, where our bed must be made, when to the realms of light our spirit wings its flight. Now I will cling forever to Christ my Savior true. My Lord will leave me never, whate'er he passes through. He rends death's iron chain, he breaks through sin and pain, he shatters hell's grim thrall. I follow him through all. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Living in this trust and hope, we confess our faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Rejoicing in the resurrection of our Lord and sharing in his peace, let us pray to the Lord on behalf of ourselves and all people as they have need. O risen Savior, set free our tongues to confess your resurrection before a world still captive to sin and death. Give us courage to go to every place and to speak in every language the salvation won for us upon the cross and the hope granted to us of life and death that death can never overcome. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O risen Savior, make us to burn with the fire of your love, that we may love you above all things, and love our neighbors as ourselves. Deliver us from fear and relieve the anxiety of our hearts, that we may live out fully the hope planted within us and the new lives we received in the waters of our baptism. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O risen Savior, anoint the words of those who preach to us your gospel, and open our ears to hear with faith all that has been done to save us. Raise up many who will serve you in the various callings of your church, and who will serve us in your name with your word and gifts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O risen Savior, hear us on behalf of Donald, our president, Tim, our governor, the Congress of these United States, and all state and local elected officials. Guide them according to your word that their labors for our nation's health and welfare may not be in vain, not forgetful of the vulnerable, aging, and unemployed. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O risen Savior, across our nation so many are in prison. Bless all prison workers that they may be humane and serve with integrity. Bless those incarcerated with hope for the future and amendment of life. Help them to serve their sentences with patience and trust in you, and bless their families who love them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O risen Savior, hear us on behalf of those who cry to you in any need, especially the sick, the suffering, the disabled, the wounded in spirit, those who suffer mental illness, and those in their last days on earth, especially Lori, Doreen, Becky, Max, Marlis, Don, Doyle, Lynn and Debbie, Gary and Marion, Bruce, Velma, Eleanor, Velma, a member, and Timothy Gilday. Give them grace according to their need and sustain them in their afflictions to the day when their sufferings will be exchanged for glory in the life to come. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O risen Savior, accept the sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving from our lips and the tithes and offerings we bring this day. Increase in the hearts of your people delight in your mercy, gratitude for all your benefits, and eagerness to support the mission of your church in word and deed. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, on the day before he suffered, your Son, in his unfailing mercy and love, graciously instituted for us his holy supper. Although we cannot now receive in our mouths his true body and blood, still we beg you to stir up our minds and hearts to a salutary remembrance of his benefits. Granted by faith we may spiritually partake of him, as we recall the words of his new and eternal testament. For he promised us, 
This is my body, which is given for you. And this cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Grant us ever to rejoice in how your Son once suffered himself upon the altar of the cross in our place, a ransom pure, holy, and undefiled. Fill us now with his blood-bought forgiveness, and pour every heavenly benediction and grace upon everyone who devoutly remembers this day his holy sacrifice. Gather us together from the ends of the earth to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb and his kingdom which has no end. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. All praise to you, dear Father in heaven, for you have opened up to us the way to eternal life in the resurrection of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. We give you thanks for all those who have gone before us in the faith and now rest from their labors. Keep us in that same faith and embolden us by your resurrection to be fearless in the face of disease, chaos, loneliness, and every sorrow of this world. Give us with Job the solemn expectation to cheer us. Our Redeemer lives, and we too shall be resurrected and glorified to live with him in his eternal kingdom. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, our Lord, who is resurrected, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom, and teach us to pray. Our, our Father, who art, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. Alleluia. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Our closing hymn this Easter festival is number 463. Christ the Lord is risen today. Alleluia. Amen.